financial solutions to money, relationships, wellness, and more. Shine a light onto your day and into your life. Power Your Life with Dr. Joanne White. Good evening and welcome to Power Your Life. I'm your host, Joanne White. It's that time of year again to make New Year's resolutions. And two of the top areas that we often focus on are health and wealth. How can you thrive financially in 2014 and beyond? Today we have nationally renowned accountant Brian Greenberg, who's joining us now to give us some tips. Hello, Brian Greenberg. Hello, Joanne. Nice pleasure to see to, you again. Again and again. It's a pleasure to be back on your show. Thank you. You've been on my radio show. Yes. I've been on your radio show 19 years, 19 is it? 19 years. I'm Be impressed. Thank you. That's Greenberg News on WNJC okay. 1360 AM. Make sure that you listen to it because <laughs> it's great. Thank you. So, financial tips. This is the time of year that people are making these resolutions and wondering, firstly, they've spent all their money on the holidays and now they're thinking, what are they going to do? How are they going to pay their bills? How are they going to be happy? Some of them are in a panic. What's one tip initially that we can give people that's going to help them feel better and move forward in 2014? Like anything you do in life, Joanne, you need to get your head straight. Be focused before you take, uh, encounter whatever you want to do. And I call it the same thing, even about financial planning and investing and building wealth, you need to have the right attitude. And the first step in get, developing the right attitude, we're not all special. In fact, we're not special. You know, to say we're not all special, I get that. It's, it's more about a sense of <clears throat> entitlement because there are too many of us walking around with that sense of entitlement. And it really means to be able to recognize that we all are in some commonality here and some, some ground that's really very important to each one of us, right? Well, that, but more so, when you approach whatever you do in life, if you have a certain level of expectation that you're entitled to, uh, you're going to be disappointed because we all have to be humble. And if you're not humble, you're, going to, you're, you're not going to be successful because you'll be held back by your attitude. I like that, that sense of humility, and that's important. So when you're facing financial challenges, when you're meeting other people, it's being able to express that humility and not only express it, but also believe in it and feel it. I'll give you an example. You're an employee at a job that you're really not thrilled about for whatever reason. And, and your boss asks you to do certain tasks that you think are, quote, beneath you. If you take that attitude at work, you're not going to be successful there. You've got to roll up your sleeves and say, if my boss wants me to copy and paste, if he wants me to make copies or whatever, do something that you think is not, quote, part of your job description. If you're willing to do whatever it takes to get the job, to get it done successful, you will be successful. You know, Brian, the reverse is mm -hmm. too. Sometimes I've seen bosses who do the same thing. They're rolling up their sleeves and they're doing whatever it is they need to do that are like their employees. And the, the respect that they're garnering from that is really incredible because people are saying, wow, he or she is just like us and they're, they're not so proud or feeling so above us that they can't do that. The same token, they say, the, the employee may think, boy, that boss is a sucker. He's rolling up his sleeves and doing it. <laughs> Let him do the job, and I'm not going to get involved. The point being is you really have to approach whatever you do in life and say, what can I do? What does it take to get the job done? And don't think that anything is beneath you because it's not. I agree. Now, you have another tip, and that is really about upholding the truth. Yes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. All right, well, the, people run oftentimes don't want to deal with the truth not Jack Nicholson, and you can handle the truth, I think anyone can handle the truth. But when you, do, when you choose to avoid it, choose to uh, uh, avoid a situation that's sensitive, that there's some uh, negative aspects that you don't really want to confront, ultimately, if you have run from what the, what the reality is, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to overcome whatever that is to fix it. And I think the first step in doing that is that people are afraid of, you know, there's fear out there. There's a fear of unknown. And what I tell people to do oftentimes is to first visualize what is the worst that can happen from this you know, uh, truth that you're trying to avoid. Whether it's getting, you know, let's say you don't get this task done on time and you really think you're not going to get it done. What's the reality? What's going to happen? Will you lose your job? No. You know, the clients can be mad. Yes, they may be mad. But let's see, if they're going to be mad, 
If I take an approach where I'm proactive, reaching out to the client, letting go ahead of time, we're running into problems, think about what the problem is so then you can address how to fix it, that's the way to approach it rather than just to say, I'm, not going to, I'm just going to work as hard as I can and not get it done and then all this is going to hit because I'm overridden by fear of not completion. You know, I'll give my example. So f being able to move through whatever is going on and like you said, look at the, the worst possible situation, which oftentimes never really happens, but at least you've covered it in your mind and thought, okay, what's the solution to this? How am I going to handle this? And then you'd be surprised that it did happen and you can move right past it. What's the third tip that we can talk well, th about? Well, there's a few things. Again, it's about, first I just want to finish up this last point about you know, hanging on to it is that if you can really embrace it, and it's also about being tolerant. People are not tolerant these days. There's a really, an and I, in fact, I'm declaring 2014 the, the end of intolerance. Uh, you know, I love that, because, so we'll call it the year of tolerance. No, not okay. the year, the, the, new, the new era. Okay. Not just one oh, year. Oh, I love that, so it's not just the year, a new era, okay? How about a new century? Of a, a, okay. a new century of building on. So, so we need to, to kind of to go forward, and to, it's, so that it's all about, remember, it's about being successful, about building an attitude, about being in, in engaging. And that's what's important is you need to, whatever you do, you have to put your all into the, your effort. Too often people don't do that and they hold back and, and that's another way where you're not successful. You have to be ready to, to fail. But it's also mm -hmm. in terms of being tolerant, being tolerant of people with differences, being tolerant of people who maybe don't have so much, being tolerant of your financial advisor being, <laughs> being you know, what, so you've got to. Well, hopefully they're tolerant of me. I, I try not to be too intolerant, but, but again, it's about, you hear the political discourse today is so divisive and, and really, so there's no discussion going on. There's no engagement of ideas. And the reality is no one has all the right answers. There are no right answers. There are a, there's a direction. I love that. There are no right answers. Right. Well, there's no I mean, true, okay. there, there's no hardened faith. It's not faith. It's truth. That's why I say worship the truth. It's the truth shall set you free, not the faith. It's when the, you have the facts, and the facts are whatever they are, whether the Obamacare is good or not good. It's not black and white. Some aspects may be good. Some aspects may not be good. But it's not an either or. But the discourse today is either or. And okay, that's so it's, it's really, you don't have to go to one extreme to another. Correct. Brian Greenberg, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, Joanne. My pleasure. Ahead on Power Your Life, sense and your memories. Why do certain smells conjure up certain feelings and emotions? Plus, learn how to make delicious gluten-free sweet treats. Welcome back to Power Your Life. Have you ever noticed that certain scents evoke a rush of emotions? Say the smell of a blueberry pie that's baking in the oven may remind you of staying at your grandmom's as a child. Or maybe a particular cologne can remind you of an old romantic partner. Why is this? Here to break it all down for us is Sue Phillips, scentologist and international fragrance designer and the founder of Scentaprises. Sue, it's a pleasure to have you here this evening. I'm so happy to be here, and thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's <coughs> my pleasure. And I actually have on me something that you created from Scentaprises, oh, my yes. very own personal scent. Dr. Joanne's own. <laughs> it is. It says Dr. Joanne's own. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. You took our scent personality test, and based, based on your responses, I created something that I thought would fit the answers to your uh, test and I'm glad you like it. Well, it's wonderful. And so and other people can take that that yes. test too because Absolutely. it is it's about de deciding and determining what scent fits your mood, who you are, what your likes are and it does it very simplistically and yet really very powerfully. Well, I, I think, you know, our sense of smell is our strongest sense after sight and it's the most ignored. And what happens is people today are wanting to reflect their own individuality and their own personality. And there are so many fragrances out there on the market. How do you know what works for you? So by taking our scent personality test, you can determine if you, your olfactive preferences. Do you like fresh scents, floral, woodsy, oriental? And we've narrowed it down so that people can really take the test online 
figure out what they like and let us know and the way we did it. Uh, and you were very gracious to take that. Thank oh, you. It was really my pleasure. And you have an incredible background. You've worked with Tiffany, you've worked with Lacombe, you've done so much with Arden, Elizabeth Arden, and you've done so much in terms of tribute to your to your mom. Let's talk a little bit about that because oh. my mom had had dementia too and so my heart goes out to you. Well thank you. Um, my mom um, passed away about two years ago and she was the most amazing artist. She was the foremost calligraphist and watercolorist from South Africa mm. and here is uh, something. This is a work she did which is, I don't know if you can see, but I don't know it's, if they can it's see, highlighted it. with gold okay, gesso. It's beautiful. Um, and then this is, um, that's a tribute that she did uh, from the ancient Latin um, Got it. Uh, tribute, the ancient Latin uh, works. And this is actually a poster that she had done. I have the original, and this is a herbal abecedarium where every letter of the alphabet is reflected by a herb or a spice. So fragrance and food and scents were very important to her. And you can see on the bottom left, it says fragrances from herbs. And then you can see here, uh, hos, you know, herbs for culinary use. So she w it was all about the senses and uh, knowing that she had had the men that, that she was having Alzheimer's, I, I wanted to really create a tribute for her. And she lived in San Diego, and so we did this celebration of the senses where we did a fundraiser for Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, but everybody who bought a painting of, of, a painting of hers was eligible for the, te for the uh, grand prize, which was a tr round trip to South Africa and a three-day trip to a game reserve. So it was which a wonderful, wonderful tribute right, for her, really yes. Really wonderful, for, not only to tribute to her, but for everybody else. Yes. Now, these wonderful scents really can help with memory and like we said earlier just conjure up memories how does it work with people with dementia and with alzheimer's well what's interesting is there are there are some tests being done right now in certain residents where they're doing fragrance therapy and music therapy and it's really it's interesting com combination? They're combining fragrance and mu music because the one thing that goes when you have Alzheimer's or dementia, which leads to Alzheimer's, are your sense of smell and your sense of taste, and ultimately all the senses um, that are so interwoven. And so um, there's an experiment being done where they took the, um, the uh, Spanish music, they took the wonderful oranges, the scent of oranges from Spain, and they basically did a celebration of the senses to see if people were able to, how they responded. So when they did the, the oranges and the uh, music, the residents of the home were very animated and noisy. Then they did a converse thing. They did actually a, where they took rain music, mm. and then they took the rain sticks and, it was and they created a marine scent, like an ozonic, oh, fresh marine right. scent. And people were very calm, and they really loved it. And it's been noted that lavender can really keep you calm, make you right. very calm. I know that lavender is wonderful. I use that sometimes yeah. in a bath to just to, exactly. to calm me and get rid of any jittery anxiety. Nerves, so well, I, s I sleep with a lavender sachet at night if I, if I'm having a problem sleeping. I, I, pass on the lavender sachet and I go, it relaxes me instantly. And you know what, you talk also about how the scents, the fragrances can actually be healing. So let's talk about a little bit about that while we have a moment. Well, I think in terms of aromatherapy and fragrances, um, you know, no one's really, um, studies have been done, but there's been no conducive, um, conclusive. Let's do one. Uh, I would love to do a <laughs> conclusive study on how fragrances can help. But fragrances can be healing. Certainly the aromatherapy, uh, you know, your essential oils. Essential oils are different from what we have. Essential oils are a single note, like a peppermint or a spearmint or a lavender or jasmine. And so those aromas, those essential oils, have been known to be, you know, to heal. You know, there's so much more. We have to do this again. Yes. But these are wonderful scents, and it's such an opportunity to really take this scent personality test and find out what's your very own scent. And thank you so much, Sue. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. It's my And enjoy your, your I, I definitely blend will. I'm going to put it on tonight. From the blends that we had. Thank you. Thank you. Ahead, we're baking up some sweet goodies that are healthy and delicious. Be sure to stay with us.
These days, thankfully, there are more and more gluten-free foods and beverages that are on the shelves. My next guest is Chef Patty Lerner, and she was inspired to start cooking and baking gluten, dairy, and soy-free foods after several serious health issues in her family. Welcome, Patty. Hi. It's a pleasure to have you. And look at this feast. Now, I'm gluten-free, and I've had to do that for some digestive problems, and it's been so difficult to find really healthy gluten-free products. So tell us a little bit about what these beautiful, this beautiful feast is, because I, I want everything that's on, that's on this table. We have a um, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free baking company. We do uh, some vegan options, some nut-free options, but most of our products have nuts. But um, what inspired me was my daughter, when she was um, diagnosed with celiac, her birthday was the next month. And the only thing I could think to make for her at the time, not knowing about gluten-free flour, was a chocolate tort that didn't have any mm. flour. Mm. But it's so rich. And I made her a beautiful birthday cake. And I remember she went to a restaurant, and I dropped it at the mm. restaurant, her and her boyfriend with chocolate-covered strawberries on top. And that day I promised her that next year she's going to have a real cake. I love it. And you actually have your daughters very much involved in Sweet Megan. Yes. So I think it's wonderful. They helped me that, start right. this. Yes. Now, there's a story behind Sweet Megan that goes back to your niece. So tell us about yes. that. Megan was diagnosed with a geoblastoma brain tumor the day that she graduated from high school. Mm. And she was 18 and at 21 she passed away and she was an amazing person. I took care of her. She never complained. You would call her on the phone and she would say, how are you? It was never about her. And I was inspired. I said, I gave the eulogy at her funeral by myself. I was the only one that spoke because I, I held her so close to my heart from right. the time she was right. born. And from that point on, we decided we were going to do something for Megan. <clears throat> so this is a beautiful tribute to Megan, and not only to Megan, to many people, not just me, who have a lot of digestive issues, celiac, and other health concerns, and also they can't do, some, some people can't do soy, not only gluten, and some people, I can't do dairy products, so, so this is wonderful. So tell us why this is so important, why these, these kinds of products are really helpful. Well, what makes us different? We started with the cakes because that was something that was lacking. The desserts, uh, people would go out and they could get a meal, but they couldn't get a dessert. They couldn't get a cake that had a long enough shelf life that, you know, that could be offered. So I um, started baking uh, with my own recipes, grinding my own flour because I didn't know anything about it. I just took the things that I knew that were gluten-free and I blended them. And now... What kind of flour are you using? All different. I use a I use quinoa and I all of the the superfoods, the whole grains. The difference between us and most of the other products out there are the first five ingredients of most of the products on the market turn to sugar. And so wheat. So no, no, no the gluten free. So oh, it would okay. be um, white rice flour, tapioca starch. Gotcha. Um, okay. All the different starches that they use to to blend their flowers. I've recently switched to quinoa pasta because you need some, you need, you, we need pasta, right? And so. I have quinoa in just about everything okay. I make. And that's really very healthy. It's right. a wonderfully healthy grain. And so the, the blood sugar is balanced. Which is so important because otherwise your blood sugar is spiking and right. it's, it's really unhealthy and then you have this letdown and that's unhealthy too. And my customers tell me that they don't get sick from my product. We are 100% gluten free dairy-free and soy-free facility, and we don't have any other products in there, so there is no chance of cross-contamination. I love it. And we're going to play. So let's play. What are these? Okay. So let's play so because this is I a, know what I'm going to do already. This is a vegan carrot. We mm. do a vegan, and this is vegan carrot cake. These are our basic chocolate cupcakes, and these are our flavor of the month. Every month we do a different flavor, and this is chocolate peppermint. So what's on top of that? Just chocolate? Just little. Uh, these are of cho chocolate sprinkles that I make out of cake. I love it. And what's this? These are basic 
vanilla cupcakes that we're going to decorate. And you know what? They don't look like vanilla. They, they look so, it looks so healthy. And I, I'm enjoying just the smell of it, the whole feel of it. Let's, let's play. Okay. So I'll do the icing. Yeah, you do the icing. And you and can and do I'm whatever play else you want. All these wonderful colors. So you have these, what are these pops called? What are they? Again, these are a, spoonfuls. Right. And, and these are Megan's spoonfuls. These are uh, chocolate chip cookie dough and coconut almond uh, chocolate chip. And these are vegan. And they're being featured where? They've been featured in the gift bags, in the uh, Oscars, the Emmys, um, the I, award shows all last year, and all the celebrities had a chance to try them. And what did that, did you get any The feedback was then? wonderful. More. More, okay. More, so that's vanilla. I want to play, okay, right? You play. Okay. Oh, and let's see. Here's chocolate. See. Chocolate. Look, I have. This. I'll ice no. them for you, and then you can play. Okay, good. We should switch. Move. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll ice them, Perfect. and then I'll move aside, and you can play. No, we can. Remember, we'll play we're together? sisters at heart, so we're going to play right. together. Okay. It's very good to be able to play together. It's yes. Good learning. So All right. So, how, how do people know? When they go to the store and they're buying gluten product, how do they know what's healthy and what's not healthy? They, they have to look at the first five ingredients. And one other thing that, there's two other things that we don't have in our product that most products do, uh, uh, companies that make desserts. All of our food coloring is from plants, food, and fruit. Perfect, so there aren't any artificial no. ingredients. And the other thing, we don't use any gums. We have no xanthan oh, gum, God. we have no guar gum. I don't gum. even know how to pronounce half of that right. stuff. Right, well so a lot of people, good. I read a lot and I'm well educated on the products and a lot of people have an allergy to, to xanthan gum and it's in everything. Thank you so much. This is a feast not only for the eyes but for all the senses and I'm going to eat something. You've been wonderful. Thank you. Stay with us. Power Your Life will be right back. us today on Power Your Life. Next week, she's called the First Lady of Musical Fitness. Find out how Miss Amy is keeping America's kids moving to the beat of her mission. We hope to see you then. Remember that you have the power to power your life.